Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life with Sterling Fox on AM 650. Welcome back to the program on Boomer Life. Today we're talking about uh, some of the latest innovations in hearing. We're talking about the inner workings of the ear. Our guest is audiologist Dr. Ted Venema. And Dr. Ted's colleague, Dr. Herman Lee in uh, in Vancouver. Uh, Dr. Ted, by the way, is with NextGen and Mainland Hearing. And uh, Dr. Ted's colleague, Dr. Uh, Lee, Herman mm-hmm. Lee, over at Mainland Hearing, Metro Town Office there on Kingsway. Uh, well, he conducted a hearing test on yours truly <laughs> a few weeks ago uh, after some nudging and prompting. <laughs> okay, it was a sharp elbow from Mark Hambly, the president of uh, Mainland and NextGen <laughs> hearing and his his buddy here dr ted kind of well they didn't you know hold a gun to my ear or anything but they were pretty insistent that i get get in the game sterling get in the game get a hearing test okay so i did i really enjoyed it yeah. dr lee was a nice man mm-hmm. and i had never had a hearing test before i was told there would be no blood mm-hmm. so i i didn't have to worry about even bringing a yeah. band-aid That's... and i really enjoyed the experience okay uh, just the walk through mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and so, but I wanted to ask you a quick question before we get to the nuts and okay. bolts of the hearing. And this refers to uh, a confusion. Maybe it's a myth, maybe mm-hmm. not. I just need an answer. The connection between the inner ear, mm-hmm. Dr. Ted, and hearing and the inner ear and balance. Ah. Are they the same thing? They come from the same organ. The, co- the cochlea, which is the Greek word for snail shell. Okay. See, this is the, you've got the outer ear, which is your ear canal and eardrum. Right. Then you have the middle ear, which is the three little bones, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. Okay. And then behind those, or in the center of those, is the tiny little cauliflower-shaped thing called your balance organs. Oh. And then, and also your cochlea, or snail shell organ. Now, those are all filled with tiny hair cells, and they all share the same fluid. Now, balance is critical for life. Okay. Absolutely. Hearing is the first sense to begin in utero in, in, in after gestation and the last sense to finish developing. Oh, really? Yep. And balance begins first. So all these people who are playing music to their babies while mm. they're pregnant and stuff, they're <laughs> on to something. They're on to something. Interesting, eh? Okay. Now, balance is critical to life, and balance begins at around three weeks after conception. Okay. And, you know, the, even the line on fish that you see on the side of a fish, that's sure. the primitive balance organ. That's oh, how okay. fish know how to swim in schools. Anyway, balance begins first, and it's critical to life. Hearing is like a luxury sense built on top of balance in evolutionary terms hearing comes after balance okay and that and hearing begins the ingestation hearing the sense of hearing begins after the sense of balance starts so you know the deaf will be the first to tell you they don't need hearing to live Mm -hmm. hearing isn't essential to life balance is absolutely but balance is a complicated sense it uses your vision it uses the balance organs of your inner ear and it also uses tiny little muscle filaments that tell you where your limbs are in space so for example if you've been caught drinking and driving and a cop has you on the side of the road and says, close your eyes and put your hand out to the side. Okay, now touch that, your nose. The standard roadside touch sobriety your nose. test. And here the, Dutch, I mean, the drunk person's do, doing, whoops, knocking my headphones <laughs> off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I right. had a couple of swigs before I came in. No, no, no. It, yeah, it's absolutely true. You watch the guy and he smacks yes, himself on the forehead yes. or misses completely. Correct. So balances vision inner ear organs, and tiny muscle filaments that tell you where your limbs are in space without you looking. Okay, okay? so balance it's is all a complicated part of the package. Sense. Interesting. And then hearing comes kind of, is built out of balance, as a luxury sense, out of balance. All based on the inner ear. All based on the inner ear. Now, another quick question before yep. we get to the hearing test, and this, in fact, may relate to my hearing okay. test. When I was a little boy, mm-hmm. I used to get earaches, yeah. a lot of <laughs> earaches. And I'm wondering, is that... Uh, th- that pretty uh, identifiable history yeah. of earaches mm-hmm. when I was a child, mm-hmm. is that a clue that in later years I might have some hearing issues? Not really. It's a good question, but it's not, not really. Earaches are caused by an infection to your middle ear, the little tiny room about as big as a sugar cube with the three little bones in it. Okay. That's normally filled with air just like your outer ear has air in it. Mm -hmm. But when that gets infected, it gets filled with pus. Mm -hmm. And now you've got a bulged eardrum, and that hurts. It sure does. And that's called an earache, and that's called otitis. Oto is ear, itis is inflammation. Okay. Media, otitis, media. Media means middle. 
okay. middle ear infection. And no, it has really precious little to do with the type of hearing loss that develops later in life, which okay. is a nerve hearing loss. And that's damage to those little hair cells inside your cochlea or inner ear. Okay. That's what elderly people get. That's what noise causes as well. But having a, pr a predisposition to ear aches and ear infections really doesn't have anything to do with that kind of hearing loss. Is deafness genetic? Can be. Yep. Okay. Yep, it usually is. Okay. Yep, yep. It's, yep. It's, it's genetic. Oh, it can be caused, too, of course. Right. But uh, normally, yeah, it, it can be genetic. Yeah, hereditary. Okay. Yep. Well, it's all just really useful information. Mm -hmm. you know, we all, uh, uh, people are listening to us right now. Yeah. And, and don't we just take our hearing for granted? We do. We do. And just, just cruise along in the car, listen yep. to the guys talk on the radio. Yep. We, we yeah, get, it's, no, it's just, it's yep. what you do. Vision gets almost all the attention. Right. You know, eyes and glasses and contact lenses. You can, the public knows what nearsightedness, farsightedness, they've heard these terms. Sure. But they don't know what conductive hearing loss and sensory neural hearing loss are. No. And conductive hearing loss, by the the way is what earaches will give you. Oh. It's blocking of the conduction of sound. You know, it's just like a, a electrical wire conducts electricity. So if you get, but do adults get hear, earaches like, a, as like I used to when I was Not, a little guy? You know why? Because your face grows longer. Oh. And because your face grows longer as you get into teenage and adulthood, right. the tubes, the eustachian tubes that connect the back of your throat to your middle ear, you know how when you blow your nose you can feel it in your Sinuses, ears? sure, yeah. That, that to those tubes become more vertical in adulthood. Ah. So you get gravity working in your side to drain them of infection. Interesting. Little babies, you know, there's there's a pretty horizontal. So it's very easy for infection from your throat mm. to get to your middle ear. Which is why little kids really get messed up on airplanes exactly. too, right? Yes, they get me messed up. Even mothers who nurse when they're lying down and the baby's laying down right. and you're horizontal, it's very easy whenever you swallow to get that old milk up into the ears. Ah. Not a good idea. Interesting. Okay? Interesting. It's, it, ear infections get, happen more in children because of the shape of their skull. Wow. Oh. They have a shorter skull. When to, and, uh, and adults have a longer one. We're going to talk about my hearing test, mm -hmm. but I also reminded you of my first memory mm -hmm. as a child of my first visual test. Uh -huh. I was in grade school, probably mm -hmm. grade one or two. Yep. And I can actually remember. Put your right hand over your right yeah. eye. So uh, at what age, in a perfect world, yeah. Dr. Ted, would we have our children first hearing test? Ideally, as soon as you're born. You know, infant infant hearing screening programs are being developed in certain jurisdictions. Okay. It's not universal, but that's the best. Mm -hmm. Because if you can identify hearing loss in an infant, you can right away remedy their 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 acquisition or learning of speech and language. Sure. You sure. gotta hear it in order to learn how to to speak and and, and talk. Right. Okay. And that in, in the oral speaking world, you hearing is, is is of an is critical. So if you can assess and find out, you know what, from day one, yep, this baby has hearing hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Right away, you can amplify or fit hearing aids on that infant, believe right. it or not. Interesting. And yeah. that kid will acquire language according to more uh, normally in the steps that he or she should. Wow. So it's really oftentimes because hearing loss is invisible, it's not detected early enough. Right, right. And so you get these kids that are failing out in school and hearing is like the last thing to be looked at. Finally, someone might clue in, oh, gee, maybe Tommy can't hear. Right, uh, right. Gee, right. Uh, and then he goes for a test and sure enough, you got a whopper of a hearing loss. Well, right. no wonder. Yeah. But, do you know, hearing loss is masked by, in the elderly, people call it dementia. They'll call it senile, senility, Alzheimer's. And to be sure that those things happen to the elderly. Absolutely. But it certainly doesn't help to be isolated and alone right. and having hearing loss in the midst of that. Right. I mean, what's better than to keep active socially? And communication relies on hearing mm -hmm. for the hearing culture. I'm not going to speak for the for the deaf culture. No, it's interesting. You know, I just had a conversation a couple of days ago, Dr. Ted, with the CEO of the Parkinson Society mm -hmm. of BC. We here at AM 650 are partnering with them. We're doing. They got a big activity month going yeah, on. Good. And with them, it's all about activity. It's yep. all about uh, yep. uh, physical uh, and mental activity exactly. being the best defense exactly. against the onset of That's Parkinson's. Right. It's, uh, there's no cure yep. but there are management techniques yep. and activity is mm -hmm. a big part it of is it, isn't it, it is sure it is interaction is critical 
And communication is interaction. Right. Hearing is critical, but it's the last thing people tend to notice. So it's, with our children, yeah. if we haven't, it, it hasn't occurred to us uh -huh. to have their hearing tested. I have three children, Dr. Uh -huh. Ted. I don't think I've, we, I don't think Carol and I ever tested our well, children's you know what, hearing. I, but now that was because I suppose they could hear us. Yeah, and you we, you know, we we would. I'm I'm in the kind of audio business, mm -hmm. not like you, uh -huh. but you know, uh, hearing's critical to yeah. me. Uh, and we would have. I certainly would have noticed, as would their mother, if there were hearing deficiencies sure, in our children. And then, of course, we would have done something. The television would be up loud. Exactly. The kid wouldn't be hearing what you were saying. But and you're the suggesting, teacher, you know? as a matter of course, and again, by way of establishing that baseline yeah, it's good the yeah. younger we test our children's hearing for the first time the more on track we have and and, and the better way we have yeah. of measuring their progress right. as they age especially if you're noticing that they're having problems right. in school right if a child's having difficulty in school being suspected of learning disabilities or whatever get the hear rule out hearing loss right get Get that checked so you know you're not sitting there wandering in the dark. Mm -hmm. Information. Exactly. It's all about information. Well, let's get back to that okay, hear, hearing test then yep. because uh, I sat down with Dr. Lee at uh, the Mainland Hearing Office in Metrotown. took me about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. He A little pleasant uh, chit-chat yep. to begin with. He basically explained what he was going to do. Yep. And there was that sound treat. I called it a soundproof room, yep. but it's a sound treat. It's, yep. it's very uh, uh, a dead room. Yeah, it, it's uh, a fairly not quiet. A lot of, yeah. Yep. And so I go in, I sit down in a comfortable chair, and uh, uh, I put on the headset, mm -hmm. and uh, he puts me through a whole series yep. of tests. And yep. so uh, describe, uh, because it took a half an hour. Well, I was what? surprised at how long it took. But there were the usual beeps and yep. beep and beep. And That's in his right. case, you know, in, when you do testing, mm -hmm. you have the testee mm -hmm. put up his or her hand. I, that's what I do. But Do you, Dr. That, Lee has one of those little Jeopardy that's buttons. That's right. right? The same thing. It all, it, it all get, as it, soon as you hear it, you press the Jeopardy that's button. That's right. That's right. And, and uh, so I, I, I'm a big fan of Jeopardy. I was happy Me to too. play, like play with the button. Yeah. So I, I was cool. <laughs> so that's what he did. He started yep. first and foremost with a series of tones. That's right. You present. You say to the person, do you have one ear better than the other? And most people say, well, you know, it's a, not really or whatever then i'd flip a coin you could start with the left you could start with the right right usually you test someone's better ear first but that regardless so let's say I, i'm going to test your right ear first i'll okay. put the headphones on you i say i'm going to give you a tones every time you hear one let me know by raising a hand or pushing that button right even if the tones become very soft or faint still let me know because i want to find out the softest level you can hear once i'm done all testing your right ear i'll switch over to your left okay right right, right. all right the person says go for it okay so you close the door he can see through the window i can see through the window right and i try not to give the guy the clue that i'm pushing a button <laughs> right, right 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 so i you know i've started in the center of the hearing range at say a thousand cycles per second a thousand something hertz. everybody pretty much can yep. hear right and so well that's a frequency that's in the center of your frequency range okay so they test that frequency and i'll, I'll start it out at a level you can hear Yep, you push the button. I lower it by 10 decibels, present it again. Yep, you push the button, lower it, lower it, until you no longer press the button. Ah. And then I start See, raising. I, I found myself pressing the button when I thought and that's, I heard it. And here's how we get around that. Okay. I lower it by 10, I lower it by 10, and each time you hear it, you push the button. When you no longer hear it, I start raising up by 5, raising it by and boop, now you push the button. Okay, I'm going to go down by 10 decibels again. You don't hear it, I'm going to go up by five up by five yep you press the button boom gotcha and that's here's the my, kicker that's it's, my low hearing that's threshold your right? hearing threshold right right for that particular tone ah. and here's the catch i've got to get you at two ascending when i'm going up by five i better get you at the same decibel level Okay, oh. twice. I better get you, better get you twice. So I'm going down by ten. You don't hear it. You, or you hear it down by ten. You don't hear it. Up by five. You don't. Up by five. Boom. You push the button. Down by ten. You don't. Up by five. You don't. Up by five. Boom. You push the button. Gotcha. So That's you're it. double checking everything. Yes, because people say just what you said. Sometimes I'm not sure. Right. So I'll just think I heard it. No, push the button. Well, you know, I. You know, so you, we have ways and means of getting around that. Well, yeah. you certainly. <laughs> do but again and all i was doing was i, I was just really i uh, i closed my eyes mm -hmm. and, and i was really focused on hearing mm -hmm. something 
And, and I knew that he was doing subliminal levels. Sure. He was now down below exactly. where I he, could hear. And then he creeps up to and where he, you do again. That's right. And and a couple of times, I think I pressed the button because I think exactly. <laughs> I heard that's the called, sound. We call that a false positive. Okay. <laughs> and that's why you double check yes. everything. People come into a test with a bias. You'll get your little J, little Miss McGillicuddy who thinks the test is a pa- is pass or fail, like you were talking. Oh, about. I know. And she just wants to do everything right. So she, by gum, is raising her hand constantly. She's guessing. And then you might get your farmer Herb, who's only going to raise his hand when he's good and sure he hears it. Okay. You know, so you got to tease that bias back to the center too. So it's it, it there's an art to it. Well, there's I was just going to say. It, and, and, you know, we were talking and kind of joking uh-huh. earlier about the because it's a test. Uh-huh. Gosh, uh, how'd you do, Sterling? Did you pass or fail? Yep. This is the first question I was asked when I got home. Yep. <laughs> yep. By someone who should know better. Yeah. But nonetheless, <laughs> that's the way we react to yep. being tested. So if we know we're going for a test, mm-hmm. our bias is to pass. That's right. So you try as hard as you can. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, we test the degree, the, the loudness it takes in decibels for you to hear each of seven different sev- seven different pitches, from low in the bass to mids to highs or trebles. Ah. Seven different pitches. We test the loudness it takes for your ear to just barely hear each and every one of those pitches. Ah, okay. And that gives us a de- idea of the degree or amount. You see, you might have different hearing loss for different pitches. You might have good hearing in the bass and crummy for the treble. Right. Someone might have the other way around. Sure. So that's why hearing aids, too, they don't make just the sounds all louder. They're almost like equalizers on a stereo. You can mm-hmm. raise or lower bass or mids or trebles right. on hearing aids. Because because people's hearing loss might differ in bass or mids and trebles. Ah. So it's the shape of the hearing loss as well. Need to take a quick break here. Our guest, always a pleasure to have Dr. Hey, hey. Ted Venema here from Next Gen Hearing and Mainland Hearing. And by the way, to learn more about both of these operations, Next Gen, by the way, is spelled N-E-X-G-E-N hearing, and of course, Mainland Hearing, uh, both a dot com, nextgenhearing.com yep. and mm-hmm. mainlandhearing.com. Terrific websites, lots of good information about hearing tests, hearing aids, and all of that sort of thing. And we're back with audiologist Dr. Ted Venema here on Boomer Life right after this quick time out. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle, this is Boomer Life with Sterling Fox on AM 650. 